Welcome back to Media Week. News Corp CEO Robert Thompson has hinted at talks with Telstra over a triple play offering which would bundle broadband, telephone and Foxtel for customers. Mr Thompson says the idea has great appeal and could help to boost Foxtel subscriptions. Let's bring back in uh, James Manning for the discussion. So this has been the much anticipated, uh, much anticipated next move, isn't it? Sure, yeah. I mean, you can already sort of bundle, but you don't really get a discount. Yeah. The only benefit is I think you get everything on the one bill. Yeah. Which is nice, but uh, you really want the discount. I mean, you can see the problem here. It's uh, Telstra, 50% uh, owner of Foxtel, of course. You know, both parties want to keep their own sort of customers, their own their own charging base, so they're both going to have to back off a little bit to, to sort of make it uh, attractive to people who haven't signed up yet. You know, so you get that discount on your mobile, on your broadband, and maybe on your Foxtel too. Foxtel have talked about, you know, price discounts, and they're doing a little bit of cheaper entry. You can get, you know, uh, Xbox subscriptions, yep. you can get online subscriptions quite cheaply. Um, but it's, you, you really want, if you could get that broadband and that mobile at, yeah. a, at a good rate, it could be a sort of a killer uh, killer deal. But then you, you can't really take away from the revenue streams. Yeah, so there's other, still much more to come, players. potentially, in that so, space. Yeah. 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 Um, Foxtel's unveil unveiled the streaming movie service Presto to James. Uh, it's launching later in the year. What are the other broadcasters doing this in this field? Yeah, well, uh, uh, Ten Play is uh, just been sort of announced today. It's sort of uh, they're doing Homeland Series Three. We'll be streaming online uh, before it's broadcast on Ten at eight thirty. So earlier that day, the same time it goes out in the states, you'll be able to watch that. Okay. Um, nine have been, there's been some talk about here that they'll announce their own sort of streaming service shortly, maybe before the, uh, the float. And uh, yep. seven have been talking about some HBB TV, which is broadband uh, broadcasting, if you like, to, to the television. Mm -hmm. But early next year there'll be something going on there. The Presto service is interesting. It's really just a movie service online, it seems to be, with the chance to buy some stuff. But if you're yeah. a Foxtel subscriber now, you've already got you've that got on option. demand where you can can watch the movies or buy old stuff too. So who else are they trying to capture by doing that then? I think people who just want movies and nothing else, I guess. Makes it easier yeah. for them to know where yeah. to go. Yeah. Right, fair enough. Um, now, you've also seen the former Austro and Foxtel executive Bruce Mann uh, turning up as the head of horse racing broadcaster TVN. Yeah, look, I don't pretend to understand the whole TVN things. They're always in the headlines for sort of dramas about racing rights and, you know, this and that and their relationship with Sky and, you know, it's, it's a very political sort of in the racing industry politics, if you like, and with Bruce having a background of Ozstar and Foxtel say. where you've had to juggle some of those uh, politics, if you like, of yeah. broadcasting. He, sh he should have be well experienced to maybe navigate his way through that. Sounds like it. Now, Nine's completed the acquisition of Nine Perth and also David Mott as GM. Um, he, where's he going to be fitting into the, into the picture? Yeah, well, he's going to work as... So he'll, he'll be in, based in Perth, mm -hmm. uh, running the Perth station, and there's a massive job there to, to get that because it's a market dominated by Seven, you know. Yep. Seven is the heritage brand in Perth, so Nine really... If they can get some of those their ratings up in Perth, it's going to... It really changes dramatically that national ratings picture where Seven does dominate all people at the moment, and we can see what it's worth to them in the ad share. Mm -hmm. So he's got a big job there, but David Mott will also be contributing because his background's programming, so we'll be also a nine sort of executive programming team, if you like, so they'll be calling on his program expertise as well. All right, um, quickly to finish off the TV news chat, um, well, for now anyway, the nine Perth seller Wincorp. Yep. So Wins sold it on to Perth. Um, the, the team's kind of been thanked. Big question is what happens next with the other yeah. Wins stations? Yeah, well, I think nine have apparently got a first look deal if if wins a seller, if the reach rule gets abolished mm. and uh, Nine wants to pick up those stations, they get maybe a chance to make the first offer. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing there is Wynn are also pretty cashed up, you know, they've, they've sold Adelaide, they've sold Perth. I mean, we don't know a lot about Wynn because it's a private company, but uh, gee, they've got a fair bit of cash uh, flowing through the place at the moment. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Gordon this week uh, said, look, we're looking at opportunities, so they, they could be a buyer. Mm, fantastic. All right, we'll uh, move on to the uh, media performance on the stock market. Uh, let's go across to Evan Lucas, who's with us from IG. Um, now, Evan, one of the big stories this week as well was the, the reaction of the market to Netflix actually winning the, um, the Emmy for House of Cards. It's obviously been in quite an unconventional entry to the market. Yeah, it certainly is. And James obviously alluded to that the Australian markets are also trying to do similar things. Very, very interesting, unconventional way that, that Netflix went about getting House of Cards. They actually put $100 million on the table for two seasons without a pilot to sort of basically go into this. Now, the advantage of winning the Emmy on the weekend, particularly obviously the fact that they won it for the Best Director Award, 
is that it gives them a really big prestige to actually now grab the talent pool that is under a fairly fierce amount of competition, considering that none of the major broadcasters over there, so NBC or ABC, etc., won any Emmys at all. So it gives them a real huge amount of bargaining power. It certainly drives their current performance even further. And that online streaming is certainly the way that most US uh, consumers particularly are really moving forward. So it's seen their stock price really shooting up quite strongly. It really continues to be a real major outperformer. They already have a very, very strong presence in that movie market. And now that they're actually getting almost live TV in terms of what they're offering as well with something as good as the House of Cards as it has been is another sort of step forward. So it's a real boost to their bottom line. People do see it as, as an option to now really bring in the talent. And, and the fact that somebody like Kevin Spacey has headlined that, that series means they could actually start picking up series even as big as something like Game of Thrones or, or even like what we've seen out of the newsroom and, and also Breaking Bad. So that's what they're looking at talking about and that's where they believe the money's going to move to and that's why you've seen the share price do so well out of the Emmy performance. Eva, let's go to APN as well because it said it's actually reviewing its well, what is quite a diverse range of assets. Will it necessarily lead to divestments? What are analysts saying? Yeah, yeah and diverse is, is, is the premium word here. The one thing you've got to look at with APN is that they have over, probably over-diversified themselves to a point that they are now have huge amount of bolt-ons on their underlying business that are now underperforming. So. You've seen Michael Miller come in. He's got a relatively good mandate, considering that since he's taken over in June, that the share price has jumped up from, from 25 cents to up to the current price of around about 32, 33 cents today. So he has done quite well, but his main driver and his main sort of mandate is to get their current debt under $450 million. It's basically three times EBITDA, and he needs to get it below that now. The original mooting idea is, is a really messy idea. They have a 50% joint venture with Clear Channel and also Quant Private Equity for their outdoor division, and there's talk of them selling out their outdoor division to, check to Clear Vision and picking up the 50% that Clear Vision owns in their, re in their radio assets. He's unsure about that, but it does look like they'll probably sell out of executive. It's probably a good thing, in considering that it's been a very poor pickup. They only picked it up this time last year, so they've had it for 12 months. Cost them 36 million bucks and, and hasn't gone anywhere at all. In fact, it's going backwards. Be very interesting to see also whether or not he can actually convince the major shareholders in uh, Independence Media and also the uh, Australian fund manager uh, Alan Gray, who rejected the $150 million capital raising that ended up costing their former board members their positions and three independent directors. He's hoping not to do that, but there is a real possibility to get that debt level down. He might have to, but uh, that's why at the moment APN's in a very, very interesting position and this current sort of asset re renegotiation and revision we'll probably see divestment happening to try and get that debt well and truly off the pack, Brooke. Fantastic. Thank you, Evan Lucas, for joining us once again. Thanks Thank you much. from IG in Melbourne. Now, time to look with James Manning at the ratings for week 30 free to air. James, you can uh, walk us through these ones as well. Yeah, Brooke, uh, same old things. Uh, Sunday news bulletins always do very well. X Factor continues to do well. Uh, you see an uh, AFL game there, up there that was the uh, final last week. Um, yeah. Seven would be happy to see that there with all the money they paid for the broadcast rights. Absolutely. But interestingly, there was a game between a Perth team and a Sydney team, so it's, it really gave you a bit of a flavour of the national competition, I guess. Yeah, interesting to see the, that national gain. Yeah, on, yep, what, sure. What's not necessarily a national sport. Yeah. Let's go to some of the top five sports uh, ratings. Yep, that's uh, Sub TV yeah. again. It's Fremantle uh, v Sydney. Yep, makes yep. It it's uh, not many games left now with the AFL, and that's some of the uh, pre and post final numbers there for that uh, finals footy on Fox. And top five non sport we can switch to as well. Yeah, second last episode that was for Australia's next top model, and we'll see how, uh, how well the final app did in last, uh, next week. Yeah, fantastic. All right, let's um, talk a little bit more about 10 as well, James Manning. I um, understand there's been some kind of deal between 10 and McDonald's, and we're talking about the smallest outlook. Uh, outlet, I should say. Smallest outlet in Australia. Sure, On yeah. Manly Peach. So what's this all about? Yeah, it's interesting though they managed to get this one passed. I don't know if we've heard yeah. the end of this one yet, but I don't know how people in Manly are going to feel about a, a McDonald's outlet at the surf club right on the beach. Right I on mean, the beach. Like, it, the, the qualifier is that it's not open to the public. It will only be serving um, beverages and meals to, to the team who work on Ten's new breakfast show, Wake Up, um, or, or their guests. But still, yeah. I think some people might be, you know... Mm, 
but uh, so there could be more to come on this one. But they also announced this week they've got a sponsor for the show, uh, Inner Health Plus, which is a, I think a vitamin supplement or something. Um, you probably know more about that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know but, if I do. <laughs> I'm sure I'll see it. When yeah, it comes but up. Uh, yeah. they say there's some more to come. But yep. we, interesting, we still don't have a start date for the show though. So I've actually um, been watching, uh, watching and quite enjoying them uh, interacting on Twitter and uh, putting it out there to even the Twitter sphere. And I'm sure they're doing another avenues. That's where I've noticed it though, saying, look, we're debating, for example, whether we have a ticker. What does everyone think? And people mm, are kind yeah, of yeah, going Ad to and across. Adam Boland's a real live wire, isn't yeah. he? And, and you've got a sort of, um, you know. Pay, uh, pay tribute to their stamina and their energy, you oh, know. Yeah. So I just hope they can keep that when it's up on air and uh, that it pays off with viewers. Yeah, well, they've been doing quite a roadshow. Um, let's talk about kind of the streaming, the US angle. We're just hearing from Evan Lucas about the, the Emmy Awards and House of Cards have been great success. Sure. What about yeah. um, the, the kind of success or the winners that we should know about from you and, yeah. and how it all translates to us back here in well, Australia? HBO too? did very well. That was, the, you know, and the, the, they were far and away won the most awards. I think it was something like 27 or 30, you know. Um, so they did fantastically well. Of course, they have a deal here. You can see them on Foxtel on Showcase Channel. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of big names didn't win anything, though. Game of Thrones walked away empty-handed. And if the buzz about that show, you know, particularly that second series, um, you would have thought it maybe got something. And uh, Mad Men, too, has been a big winner in the past, but didn't, didn't manage to pick up anything this year. Yeah. You mentioned Next Top Model. How did yeah. it actually rate in the end? And, uh, I mean, are we looking at another series? or? Yeah, look, I think it'll definitely be back. Jennifer Hawkins' first year as a host. Mm -hmm. um, they've yet, I think, to finish sort of negotiations about, you know, renewing her contract, running it up again. But it's, look, I think it's Fox 8's, uh, you know, it's their big program. It's their, you know, showcase program. Uh, it won't be going anywhere. Did pretty well. Look, the overnight numbers aren't as strong as they once were, but people now take opportunities to watch it online, watch it on other nights, uh, watch it on their uh, their recorders, yeah, their IQ. So those big numbers aren't there overnight, but the, the numbers are still really strong across the week, and it's still the number one non-sport program on the platform. Great stuff, uh, James. Coming up, we're going to be speaking about the 80th birthday celebrations for the Australian Women's Weekly, our interviews with Bowers' CEO and also the editor-in-chief of the weekly, Helen McCabe, are coming up.